In this video, we're going to cover counting longer rest values. Um, so we've already covered how to count how to count a quarter rest. Just to review, a quarter rest is that squiggly line, and it lasts for one beat. Okay, uh, we will be revisiting this, of course, um, but we only know how to have uh, single beat rests. So we're going to add a little bit more to our vocabulary now. So let's look at this. Uh, my beautiful artwork is going to guide you to know what uh, these different kinds of rests look like. So first of all, there's a half rest. Okay, I'm going to start with the shorter note value. Uh, so a half rest, the word half kind of sounds like the word hat. I know it's a stretch. Just go ahead and follow me on it. So uh, if we look right here, um, we see that a half rest is a line. And it has, like, I guess a little um, filled-in rectangle on the top of it. And if you think about top hat, that sort of resembles it. Um, this is Steve, I guess. They're all going to be named Steve. And uh, like I said, the word half sounds like hat. So that might be an easy way to remember how it looks, which can be useful because a half rest and a whole rest look very similar. Okay, so a whole rest doesn't look like a hat. In fact, uh, if you spell the word whole differently, it sounds like whole. So if you think about Steve falling into a hole, unfortunately, um, he would be falling into a whole rest. Okay, so a whole rest is just like a half rest, but upside down. In other words, if you think of that line, um, the, I guess the filled in rectangle is going to be below it. Um, just for the moment, please ignore everything under the green line until we get there. Um, just to go over a little bit more specifics on half rests and whole rests, please refer to this. So we have half rest. Uh, take your attention to this right side, please. A half rest correlates exactly to a half note. We learned that a half note has two beats. Okay, so if you see a half note, that means you're going to be making a sustained sound with an articulation at the beginning for the beginning of a half note. Um, and it lasts for two beats. It, it can have uh, two quarter notes inside of it. Now, a half rest, um, and by the way, this is all as if we were in uh, common time, okay? So a half rest is, um, it would just be the exact same amount of beats, but you would not be playing anything. Now, uh, just because it says it's a rest doesn't mean you're not going to be engaged. Keep in mind that some of the times that you need to be the most mentally engaged are during your rests, so you need to be subdividing. In other words, you need to be keeping track of how many downbeats there are um, while you're counting through your half rest, so you make sure that you count it accurately. So a half note corresponds to a half rest because they both have two beats. In that same way, a whole note corresponds to a whole rest because each of them has four beats. So just for a quick example, I'm gonna draw your attention down here to the bottom. Um, so if I was to have two half notes, and again, I was in 4-4 four, four time, otherwise known as common time, my counts would be one, two in parentheses, three and four in parentheses. Okay, the way that that would be counted, oops, the way that that would be counted is like this. One, two, here I go. One, three. Okay. Similarly, if I had uh, maybe the first two beats was not a half note and instead it was a half rest, it would look like this. Okay. And th this would also change which notes are in parentheses. I'm going to also put notes, uh, rests, excuse me, in parentheses. So there is also no articulation on rests. That is why they're going to be in parentheses, just like um, the beats that are not articulated during a longer note value. So I'm going to whisper the counts for these rests. One, two, here I go. One, two, three. And the same thing would be true. I'll go ahead and erase these for now. The same thing would be true if I switched them. So if this was over here, this was over here, it's like this. One, two, here I go. One, three, four. 
Okay, so that's how half notes and half rests correspond to each other. Now let's go ahead and explore the way that whole notes and whole rests would sound. So a whole note, we'll go ahead and treat, treat that as the first measure, and a whole rest would be, excuse me, would be the second measure. So I'm going to write in the counts. For the whole note, we have one, and then two, three, and four are all in parentheses. Okay, and then for the whole rest, we have all of them in parentheses. One, two, three, and four are all in parentheses. And these would be whispered. There is no articulation here at all, so there's no reason to have anything that's not in parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and count this for you. One, two, here I go. One, one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, here I go. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, and if I switched them, <clears throat> just like before, it would be the exact same thing. So this will go over here. So it's just to give you a chance to see it in a slightly different context. One, three, one, two, here I go. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, last time. One, two, here I go. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, that takes us through whole notes, uh, uh, excuse me, whole rests and half rests. Now there's one other interesting kinds of, kind of rest uh, that you'll see over here. So um, let me go ahead and take my cursor down to the bottom and we're gonna go below the green line now. So sometimes they don't wanna write a whole rest for um, you know multiple measures. It might be easier to abbreviate it and show you um, some different way to say, hey, you're gonna rest for multiple measures in a row and I'm just gonna tell you how many. When you see that, you'll see a big uh, horizontal thick line with uh, two, I guess you, they look like brackets, but they're vertical lines um, at the two edges. And at the top, it'll say the number of um, measures you're going to be resting for in a row. Okay, so, if we're in 4-4, four, four, let me go ahead and move over and zoom out a tiny bit. So if we're in 4-4 four, four, and we have um, uh, that thick line with the two little brackets on the end um, and the number 2 on top, we know that we're going to be having two measures of rest. Which means since we're in 4-4, four, four, each measure is going to get four counts, right? So it's going to be 1, 2, I'll write in those counts in just a moment. But did you notice that I counted to four two times? Let's go ahead and write in those counts. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm just going to put a little squiggly line right here. And then one, two, three, four. I'm counting to four twice. OK, so let's go ahead and count through this. One, two, here I go. Did you notice that I said two over here? The reason for that is because I'm keeping track of which set of four I'm at. You can kind of think of it like this. Let me go ahead and scoot this down so it's not in our way. You can kind of think of it like this. I'm keeping track of it. Let me get a brighter color. This is the first set of four, and this is the second set of four. So I'm gonna go ahead and say one, two, through all whisper. One, two, three, four, and then two, two, three, four. Okay, it's the same thing, but that way I can keep track. That way if I have 60 measures of rest, um, the last two measures of rest might look something like this. It might be 59, two, three, four, 60, two, three, four, which is really convenient because counting rests is so important not to miss up because you don't want to be that person that ends up miscounting your rests and you're the only one not playing when everyone else started. Or even worse, you're the only one playing when everyone else is quiet. Okay, now we're going to move on to an example of rests in 3-4 time. 
So if we're in 3, 4, let me zoom out just a little bit again. So if we're in 3, 4, and we see this, this uh, long rest notation with a 4 on top, that means we're going to have four measures of rest. But we don't count to four each time. We're in 3, 4. We're going to count to three each time. How many times? To be specific, we're counting to three four times. So we're going to say one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and write that down here just to make it a little easier to picture. Let me move this stuff out of the way for a moment. So it would look something like this. One, two, three. It's going to do, be that a bunch of times. I put the squiggly line for each set. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And those would all be rests. And now that looks a lot, a lot clumpier until we go ahead and add um, the number for each set. So we're going to count to three, one, two, three, four times. So if I was to count this, um, I'm going to make a different cursor because I think it'll be easier if it was vertical. Uh, I'm going to count this like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And that allows me to keep track of which set of three I'm counting while all along subdividing and making sure that I know how many beats are going by um, so I can accurately count all of my rests. So we'll get some practice counting some of these longer rest values mixed in with uh, some of our half notes and whole notes um, and maybe some other note values in a different video.